Hello and welcome to Racers Now, the final Group 1 of the flat season, traditionally known as the Racing Post Trophy, but now called the Futurity Trophy at Doncaster over a straight mile for the two-year-olds. Takes place on Saturday, the 26th of October and pretty much brings an unofficial end to the flat season. You could call it Champions Day. You could call it Racing Post Trophy Day. You could call it November Handicap Day. Who knows when the season start and end nowadays. Um, but... For the first time in any of the Group 1 previews we've done this year, we're previewing a race whereby Aidan O'Brien does not train any of the first four in the market, which is a surprise given the amount of runners and the amount of dominance he has over anti-post markets, whether you're looking at classics or Group 1s for older horses or two-year-olds. He's normally dominating the top of the market and he doesn't have any of the first four in this one at the moment. But that's not to say that he can't win it. Again, this year, he's won it plenty of times before. O'Brien actually, at the moment, has 20 of the 44 entries. Currently in the Racing Post Trophy, he's got 20 of the 44 entries. Just the 20. Um, so, yeah, he's no doubt going to have a big say on this one as well at some stage. Five of the last seven winners went on to win a British or Irish Classic the following year. So, it really is a race that does signal classic contenders, usually derby horses, Derby types, given that this is a group one for two-year-olds over a mile, the only one in the UK and Ireland. But in in recent years, it's actually been more of a Guinness trial as well, or a Guinness pointer, uh, with the likes of Saxon War Warrior, Cameco, um, etc., all going on to win the 2000 Guineas at the start of the next season. Six of the last 10 winners have been favourites at two to one or lower, but that looks unlikely this season, as as we speak, the market is currently four to one the field with Wimbledon Hawkeye heading it. Um, that's following Wimbledon Hawkeye's Group 2 Royal Lodge win last time. Um, pretty impressive. Travelled really well. Hit the front almost too early uh, for him, but uh, he was travelling that well that he had no choice but to hit the front under James Doyle. Has previously been ridden by Sylvester de Souza, who was banned, I think, uh, um, at the time of the Royal Lodge taking place. And before that... Uh, Wimbledon Hawkeye was um, second behind the Lion in Winter, who is the current Derby favourite um, and looks set to remain in that position over the winter. So good form from Wimbledon Hawkeye, uh, likely runner, solid form, soft ground seems fine, which is what you're likely to get at the end of October at Doncaster. So clearly a contender and like I say, an intended runner at this stage. Whilst we're on Wimbledon Hawkeye, it is worth mentioning the um, one that was second behind him in that Royal Lodge stakes that is four times the price. And that is Royal Playwright. Deserves a mention at this stage, you must say. Um, like I say, second behind um, Wimbledon at that new market race. Um, still showing signs of greenness was Royal Playwright. I mean, it was only his third career start for Andrew Bolding and Oshie Murphy. Um, definitely closing on Wimbledon at the line, but he was way, well clear. Um, and Wimbledon actually started running around a little bit green himself. Royal Playwright, also green. And at four times the price, would definitely be of interest if declared, um, particularly with that current price disparity between the two. The second favourite in the anti-post market at the moment is hot as hell. Um, the leading Irish contender, but like I say, not trained by Aidan O'Brien. This one is for Jesse Harrington. Um, this is a son of two darn hot, won the Group 2 Beresford Stakes last time um, and has formed behind the likes of Omri, Matisse and a bit further back, Scorthy Champ, a Group 1 winner in his right uh, before that. So, um, yeah, running to a decent level over in Ireland. I'm not sure on the running intentions for Hot as Hell, but he's certainly been left in at this stage. And it may be one to look out for on Monday, the 21st, uh, as the five-day decks are made. I mean, Harrington doesn't send many over to England um, away from the classics, if you like. This is clearly a Group 1. Um, but I just wonder, with this uh, Hot as Hell, he has been a little bit quirky in his career so far. Um, he gets saddled at the state at the stables rather than in the in the pre parade ring. He's he's worn a red hood in the prelims before now as well, and they've just been trying to keep a lid on him. They've they've said that publicly. So is he going to be one that, as a two year old, wants to travel um, at this stage in his career? Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. And if you watch back that Beresford for Hot as Hell, um, he was ridden and off the bridle plenty early enough at the Curragh there and needed every single yard of the mile 
if it was up to me, I'd be putting him away until next year. Um, if he was mine, he's done enough this year. He's won that group two, Beresford, which is always a good, uh, certainly a good marker over in Ireland. Um, but yeah, this is a group one. And maybe to get a group one on his page at, as a two-year-old would be a uh, clearly a big plus. But I just wonder, with his quirkiness, with his connections, with the way that I think he needs way more than a mile in time, don't know if this Racing Post trophy is the right race for him, but we will see. It's an anti-post uh, market that we're looking at after all. Uh, Ralph Beckett uh, just keeps getting better and better, it seems, at the moment. Um, can do no wrong. Arc winner recently and just every single year getting better and is really at the top table now. Um, he has got uh, Maturi Bay entered at this stage, although we've not seen him since the end of August, which would be a question mark. He's only had two starts um, so far. Won a novice race at Leicester, then into that Group 3 to Lario at Sandown, which is turning out well. He was in front of Royal Play right that day and behind Field of Gold, who I think is a good horse. Um, so, yeah, not seen since the end of August. And there is plenty of two-year-old racers at this time of year that Maturi Bay could have ran in and he's missed a fair few of them. So that is a question mark there, but he's certainly got potential. And he's currently 6-1 to one in the market. Uh, moving next on to Judmont, and it's been a really strong year for them for two-year-olds. Field of Gold, I mentioned earlier, he's also entered in this, but unlikely to run, given that he was well beaten on Ark Day, but you wouldn't put it past him. So yeah, the, uh, Judmont have got a quite promising bunch of two-year-olds spread across, across a range of trainers. And the one there that nearest the top of the market for them for this Racing Post trophy is a horse called Detain. Um, two wins in novice races at Kempton so far by a combined nine lengths. But this is a chunky step up in quality and class. And it wouldn't be the usual Gosden style to go from two novice races to a group one, in my opinion. But if the Judmont boys want to give it a go, I'm sure John and Thady will take heed and do so. But yeah, Detain, full of potential. But like I say, made his debut in August on the all-weather, winning well. Then again, in early October, um, just a few days ago, winning by seven lengths that time. But is he going to be taking the jump into Group 1 company at this stage in his career for the Gosdens? Not their usual style but I wouldn't put it past him. Charlie Appleby um, has had a strange year, really, let's be honest. Um, very quiet at some of the major flat meetings in Europe. Didn't have a runner at Arc weekend at all on the Saturday or Sunday at Longchamp. You have to remember he had a very quiet quiet Royal Ascot, a very quiet Goodwood, etc. Um, although he had a Group 1 winner at Goodwood. But in terms of number of runners um, at the major flat meetings, he's not had that many. Maybe it's because he has not got the horses, but with his older horses, has been mopping up big prize money in North America seemingly every week. Um, but saying all that, some people might side uh, on the uh, on the side that Charlie's had a quiet year for Godolphin, but then he rocks up at Newmarket for future Champions Weekend on the 11th and 12th of October and wins both juvenile Group 1s. Desert Flower in the Phillies Mile, and then uh, I forget the name of the horse that won the Dewhurst as well. So yeah, he's just won. He's just he's just mopping them up. He also won the the Dewhurst winner. Also won the Middle Park a few uh, weeks earlier. So the big takeout being when Charlie Appleby does try and run in a big race in the UK, he's not doing so just to make up the numbers. Um, he's got going in with a real chance. Often they are favourites, but he's not running them down the field. He's not running 10 to 1 shots. He's running 6 to 4 and 2 to 1 shots. And he did win this race last year at Doncaster with Ancient Wisdom. He's got two entries at this stage. Appleby, Silver Peak, who was disappointing and a long way behind Delacroix at Newmarket last time. So I thought that Silver Peak would be unlikely to run here. But one of more interest would be this Anno Domini, um, who is unbeaten into novice starts. Yes, would be taking a leap up in class, but it's something that um, Charlie Appleby is certainly more well inclined to do than the likes of John Gosden, for example, from earlier. Um, he's clearly uh, not one to be betting anti-post, this Anno Domini, given that he's not been seen since early July. So he ran at Newbury in a novice race in June, in the middle of June, then ran early July in another novice race at Sandown under a penalty, won well there, but hasn't been seen since. So from an anti-post perspective, you certainly couldn't be looking to back him, but would be of interest if turning up on the day, given what we said about Appleby's record and the way that he manoeuvres horses. And like I say, they're only running if they've got a big, big chance in these Group 1 races uh, this year more than ever. Uh, so we've got this far in the video and not really mentioned any Aidan O'Brien horses. He's got plenty entered, uh, 20 of the 44, as we mentioned. Aftermath is the shortest price of the O'Brien runners at the moment at around 8 to 1. Um, but he doesn't look like soft ground will be to his liking to my eye. 
by Justify out of a Galileo mirror, um, but did win an Irish maiden by five lengths last time. And before that, on his second start, had tried in the Group 2 Champagne Stakes at Doncaster. Was third that day. Didn't look a great renewal of the Champagne Stakes. Aftermath wouldn't be my idea of being one of Aidan O'Brien's top notches this year or next. That could come back to bite me. Um, his next in the market is 10 to 1, Delacroix. That would be more likely of a runner in this race in my book. Um, winner of the Group 3 Autumn Stakes last time at Newmarket. Had to work pretty hard for it, but he looked like a out-and-out middle-distance prospect in that Autumn Stakes when winning, battling hard late on against a Rafe Beckett horse. Um, he might not be quick enough at this level, at this time of his life, in the straight mile at Doncaster. Like I say, I think he needed every yard, but he could well run. And there's a whole host of other O'Brien horses entered. We're not going to go through every one, but the market suggests at the moment that they are the two most likely uh, runners. We've got horses in there like Camille Pizarro, who eventually, as an outsider, won a group one on his last start. That was at Longchamp over seven. I don't think he's going to stay a mile this year. Uh, that is for sure. And then we've got Expanded. Um, also for O'Brien, who was second in the do her shadow of light was the Godolphin horse, who I forgot his name of. Um, but yeah, Expanded ran really well in a strange race. They spread across the track in that do hers and Expanded was uh, was second. They think he's one for next year. Definitely would stay if turning up. But then we're just there uh, questioning which ones are going to turn up. The other one worth mentioning is Stanhope Gardens, who was second uh, behind um, Delacroix. In that autumn stakes, again, battling really hard for Rafe Beckett. So he's got a couple of contenders in there as well. And then, um, yeah, there's all sorts of entries at this stage. It's likely to be soft ground. And I think Wimbledon Hawkeye is very likely to turn up. And there's given that I would question that the next three in the market, hot as hell, Maturi Bay and Detain for different reasons, whether that be travel, inexperience, ground, I think they would be less likely to turn up. I hope they do to make it into a good race, but I think they would be less likely to turn up. So you might be inclined to say that at the moment, as very much an intended runner, gets the trip, gets the ground, and got the form in the book, Wimbledon Hawkeye might be uh, a good idea to back at 4-1, to one, given I think it will go off a lot shorter. I'm not putting up as an official bet, but just from a market and how the market's going to change, and I anticipate it to change in the next few days, the, uh, the, it could be a bit of a shake-up, given there's quite a few that might not run. And we've got absolutely no idea what Aidan O'Brien is going to do with his 20 entries. I'm clinging on to the flat season here on Racers Now. This is the final Group 1 of the season in the UK, but we will look forward to things like the Breeders' Cup, maybe even the Japan Cup. And obviously, SD will be back to talk all things jumps. And remember, next Tuesday, the 22nd of October, we're having a jump season phone in. So any uh, followers and listeners and subscribers that want to jump on, have a chat, have a debate with SD and myself and tell us what you're looking forward to for the jump season. Please feel free to do so. We'll be back soon here on Racers Now. 